The ice rinks hosting winter sports may appear the same, but a closer look reveals the differences between them are actually quite big. Making the perfect surface for the rinks is not as easy as it seems. Each ice sport has its own requirement for the thickness, slipperiness, and evenness of the rink. And today, we are looking at the ice for curling. In curling, we want to be as thin as we possibly can. This is Mark Allen, the chief ice technician with World Curling Federation, who has been working in this industry for more than 30 years. The thinner the ice is, the easier it is to control the surface temperature. If you don't have sufficient temperature or coldness in the surface of the ice, then the stones stick to the ice if it, it's too warm. If, on the other hand, it's too cold, the ice is so compact and the crystals are so tight, the, the stone won't slide. Unlike the other ice rink sports, where athletes would prefer the rink to be smoother, the surface for curling is a little bumpy. Curling uses a technique called pebbling, which is more or less what it sounds like. Ice makers spray water droplets evenly across the ice surface that turn into countless little pebbles as they freeze. It's these pebbles that lace a little bit of air underneath the stone to stop it sucking itself to the ice and therefore it can slide. But to maintain the conditions of the pebbles is another key factor. They will wear. When they start off, the, the, the pebble, if I can show you, it, is up like that. It's in, a, it's in a point. And then as the game goes on with all the brushing and what have you, it starts to come down and down and down. If the pebbles are completely worn down and the ice has melted effectively, it literally means the game is over. So in order to make sure that the pebble stays standing, we don't use normal tap water. We use a purified water. And because it's very, very pure, it freezes very, very quickly and very, very hard. Therefore, the pebble lasts for the whole game. What's even more surprising is that the bottom of a curling stone is not flat, it's concave. Imagine yourself with an upside down saucer, something like this, and sit it on the table. You can see that only the outside of the saucer is touching the table. That's the same as curling stone on ice. And the narrow running surface to contact the ice is only 6.25 millimeters wide. So together with the pebbles, they allow the stone to glide more smoothly across the ice. I'm sure we've all seen memes and gifs of curling sweepers furiously brushing the ice. Some of us have even tried it at home, like these guys. Here, the sweepers are trying to smooth down the pebbles along the track of the stone to change the way it curls, or to help the stone travel further and faster by reducing friction. The faster the brush head is moving, the, the more minute amount of melting you're going to do to the pebble to get the stone to run a little bit further. The other half of the story is how much pressure a player can put down. If you do it with your hand, you move it very hard, you feel a bit of heat, but then you press your hands together, the heat is significantly more. So it's a, it's a combination of the speed of the brush head plus the pressure. Making eyes for curling is a tough job. And here's another example to prove it. Normally, the maximum height difference within a 3 square meter area in an ice rink can be no more than 2 millimeters. This might sound painstakingly accurate, but there's even less room for error in curling. The ice has to be 100% flat. Although water will find its own level, it doesn't freeze levelly um, because it picks up some contaminants or some dust or particles from the air which uh, make the, the water a little bit more like a soup and therefore it, it, it creates little dips and little hollows in, in the ice. So what we have to do is fill these little hollows and little dips in to make it absolutely 100% level. The ice maker's job isn't just restricted to the ice, actually. To ensure every event runs smoothly, they also have to monitor and maintain the correct temperature and humidity levels from start to finish. And you know what? It isn't just one temperature they need to manage. There are three temperature-controlled areas inside the arena. The ice surface, 1.5 meters above the ice, and the stands. As the science behind the ice making keeps evolving, ice technicians have to upgrade their skills to keep pace with the new innovations. But in Mark's own words... I love my job because no two days are the same. <laughs>